Before I retired to Brookings some seven years or so ago, I was both a high school teacher of social studies and English, as well as a Lutheran pastor. Both the U.S. and Oregon constitutions protect the freedom of religion and the exercise thereof. Although the federal constitution's First Amendment is quite clear, ranking it with freedoms of speech, the press, assembly, and the redress of grievances, the Oregon constitution gets very specific. No law shall in any case, whatever, control the free exercise and enjoyment of religious opinions or interfere with the rights of conscience. The previous section before that states that all people shall be secure in their natural right to worship Almighty God according to the dictates of their conscience. Such protections in a clear federal statute approved unanimously by both houses of Congress in the year 2000 have been flouted, scoffed at, and ignored by the City Council and Planning Commission of Brookings, Oregon in the city leadership's continued attempt to punish St. Timothy's Episcopal Church for operating a soup kitchen too often and providing ministries which some neighbors have complained attract undesirables to a neighborhood bordering a large public park, Azalea Park. This has prompted a federal lawsuit accusing the city of denying constitutional rights, as well as violating the Religious Land Use and Incarcerated Persons Act. This all started when 30 signed an inflammatory petition to the city council complaining about hostile vagrants allegedly bringing criminal activities to their neighborhood because a church with a long history of showing radical hospitality continued to provide frequent meals and a plethora of services to the needy. These stepped up during COVID as other churches cut meal programs and even the county health department was shut down by the state. While much was shut down, St. Tim's became a welcoming place, offering COVID shots, meals, clothing, showers, and a plethora of ministries. In recent days, the city is threatening the church with $720 a day fines through an abatement procedure designed for the removal of trash from property. Planning Commission staff, clearly out of their bailiwick, misused dictionaries to claim church buildings could only be used for worship. The council may not like what the law clearly requires, but they should not continue to be scoff laws forcing prolonged and costly litigation. On September 25th, the city council, whose mayor and two members face a recall election conveniently in early November, can reject a planning commission abatement order. Admitting a big mistake is better than continuing its consequences. The law is clear. Should taxpayer dollars be wasted in litigation proving what civic leaders should have known all along, unless there is a compelling government interest that cannot be met by other means, cities have no right to tell churches how to exercise their faith. The term scoff law became popular during prohibition to refer to those who preferred moonshine and speakeasies to obeying the law. Brookings voters will soon have an opportunity to throw out three scoff laws, throw them out because they do not respect religious liberty as well as having a very strange understanding about the importance of punishing people for theft. They do not respect religious liberty and the practice thereof and don't recognize the law of the land. Who knows, somebody might not like how you practice your faith and go after you. This is Robert O'Sullivan. From the Bureau of 